Hi everybody, JJ here at Newegg Studios. And you can see right here in front of me, I've got an awesome set of PC DIY enthusiast grade hardware. So for many of you, I know you've been super excited about the latest generation of Z270 series gaming motherboards, specifically mini ITX motherboards. But up until right now, there hasn't necessarily been a lot of offers uh, in the marketplace, but we're excited to finally announce and release the brand new Strix Z270i gaming motherboard. So this is a high performance mini ITX board that compromises very little when compared to high performance ATX based motherboards. We've got improved audio, improved networking, high performance VRM for great overclocking, robust fan controls, and even ASUS or RGB sync connectivity all on board. So starting off on the build, first thing that's really gonna be influencing a small form factor build is going to be the actual chassis. So right here, you can see that we've gone ahead and selected NZXT's Manta chassis. This is a really interesting uh, chassis in terms of the overall look and feel. It's got these rounded kind of curved edges, which I think give it a little bit of a different look compared to the normal kind of boxy angular chassis that you see out there on the marketplace. It's also got this two-tone finish where you've got the red and the black, which I think really complements, of course, the monochromatic color scheme that we've got not only on our motherboard, uh, but also on the Strix graphics card, and even some of the other accessories, uh, including like kind of the red and black fans and the red and black dims that we're going. So that's overall overall the theme that we're going to be going for in terms of the, the color schemes that we're going to have. Now when we take off uh, the panel, we're going to see that we've actually got a lot of flexibility and of course you can see you got that nice acrylic so that you're going to be able to actually take advantage of a lot of what we're going to be uh, doing in terms of an aesthetic visibility on the inside of the chassis. Now one of the nicer things about going with something like a Manta is there's actually a pretty good amount of a usable space to be able to feel comfortable with which is generally a little bit more of a problem when you go about building a small form factor system like this, but not really an issue on this side of the fence. And in terms of airflow, which is usually also a consideration in a smaller form factor build, tons of airflow. You've got mounting points for two fans here in the front, two more fans here at the top, and then a rear mounted fan. Now moving all the way down to the bottom is another really nice touchstone of this chassis, which is gonna be the integrated PSU shroud. This is gonna keep things really nice and tidy in terms of the overall aesthetic so that when we slide in the power supply, we can hide away all the cables and just really uh, focus on the cables that we need to have connected to our system, really giving us a nice clean level uh, and look overall to our system. So we've gone ahead and unboxed our Z270i Gaming Mini ITX motherboard. You can see it's a seriously packed board. It looks absolutely awesome. It's got this monochromatic color scheme. Really nice high performance heat sinks, great VRM so that we're gonna get a great overclocking experience from our K-series CPU. So let's go ahead and drop in this K-series CPU. Right here, we've got a 7700K. So absolutely top of the line KB Lake series CPU. I'm just gonna go ahead and pop out that latch to the side, lift out, gonna pop up. Make sure to keep this, keep it inside the motherboard box. And then you can see we've got the CPU socket exposed. Now here I've got my CPU. You wanna to try to minimize making sure that your fingers make any contact with the overall IHS or the cover of the CPU socket, as well as making sure that when you grip this, don't allow your fingers to touch the underside. You've got a lot of sweat, oils, minerals, things like that that you don't want to affect the overall pads when they make contact with the actual uh, pins inside the CPU socket. We've actually found that this can uh, lead to a lot of different issues in terms of memory not initializing correctly, memory stability, and a lot of things like that. So if we take a look right here at the CPU, you're gonna see you have these two little different points, one on the left and another one on the right. In the CPU socket, you have two little notches that align with those divots. So we just wanna rest, rest that in place. So we're gonna drop it in. Once you do that, you can do a little bit of a wiggle, make sure that it's settled in. Once we do that, we're gonna bring down the primary retention plate. We're gonna now pull down on the retention bar, pull out, then in, that locks it into place. You'll feel a little bit of resistance, but from there, you're good to go. So now that we've got the CPU installed, we're next gonna go ahead and install our RG certified memory. So these are DDR4 DIMMs, they're from Avexer. Uh, the fact that they're actually RG certified means that they're actually plug and play. We don't even have to enable the XMP profile, which is fantastic. On top of that, there are full low profile DIMMs, which means that we're gonna have minimal obstruction, which is fantastic, especially in a small form factor chassis. And last but not least, I absolutely love the fact that we've got an integrated LED light bar on this. So they're gonna give us a really nice, cool kind of binary pattern in terms of red LED lighting. So like always, what you wanna make sure and do is look for the notch that's on the actual dim. Make sure to not make any contact by touching the actual bottom of the dim. And then you wanna correspondingly line that up with the actual dim slot. 
So you can see right here, got it. I'm gonna go ahead and slide it down, press it down on both sides, and it's gonna click into place and you're good to go. You've successfully installed it. Now you'll actually see that right here, one side is open-ended and the other one actually has a retention kit in place. This is done to be able to allow for an easier level of installation or removal of the dim as you don't have to worry about opening or closing this side. So don't worry about having that click something into place on this end. So right now we're just gonna be removing the M.2 heatsink. One of the cool features actually about this board is that normally with M.2 drives, you sometimes have a concern that there's going to be uh, some issues in that regard, but essentially we have a nice little heatsink assembly here. You can see right here, we've got the thermal interface material, and then here we have the actual M.2 slot itself. So here we have, of course, a protective film. We're gonna need to take that off. Once you remove that, we're gonna set this aside. So now we're gonna take our M.2 drive, of course, with the heatsink removed, we're gonna go ahead and put in the M.2 drive. Make sure to not make any contact with the actual uh, pin interface. Line it up with the slot. You wanna angle it in, ideally, until it kinda sits in there in place. Push down, and then you're gonna to wanna to line it up with the standoff. So standoff is already in place, so I'm going to go ahead and take one of the M.2 screws, which are included inside the box, and then just screw the drive into place. Do that until it's about finger tight. And you've now installed the drive, and we're gonna go ahead and put back on now the heatsink. Now we're gonna go ahead and install the second drive. Now, when you install this drive, you do wanna keep in mind that you will need to install this standoff right here. So this standoff comes included inside the box, but it is required to be able to go ahead and allow this M.2 drive to be installed. So we need to make sure and line up the corresponding position for this drive. So if you want, what you can do is take your M.2 drive, line it up, and see where it sits. Most M.2 drives are 2280, meaning that it's going to be this secondary standoff point. So I'm gonna go ahead and thread that in there. And finger tight is okay. Once you've gone ahead and done that, take your M.2 drive, angle it in place, rest it down, and pretty much get ready to screw it into place. So now that we've got CPU, memory, and M.2 SSDs installed, we're pretty much ready to start mounting this into the motherboard, as well as consider how we're gonna be mounting in the backplate hardware required for our CPU cooling solution, specifically the NZXT Crack and X62. Now, the Manta has a nice open cutout so that if you wanted to mount the motherboard first and then apply the backplate, you could do that. Personally, I find it a little bit easier to get this backplate into place initially and then mount in the board. So that's what we're gonna do you're gonna to wanna to make sure to align these essentially standoffs which insert into the mounting holes to their corresponding socket position. So this is gonna be for 1150X. So we're gonna go ahead and flip this board over. See, you have your corresponding mounting holes. Line it up, push it down, make sure that it's fully rested in place. Now. Sometimes there's an included, an actual two-sided tape material, which would adhere this fully to the board. Up to you if you want to do that. The one disadvantage is that if for whatever reason you need to separate this from the board, you want to go through maybe a remount or reinstall, it would be a, quite a bit more complicated to remove this after the fact. And I've generally found no issues without use, uh, with if you don't use the double-sided tape. Now that we've got the back plate in place, I'm just going to slide it. Keep your hands in place so that it doesn't fall out. You can fold it like this. Once you hold it, make sure you hold it all the way and you can take your standoffs and just put them back in. That'll help hold it in place as we mount the motherboard in. We're gonna, of course, need to take the thumb screws back off when we put on the primary pump and cold plate for the cooling solution. But for right now, this will help to just keep the back plate in place. Next up, we've got our IO plate right here, the IO shield, and this is a critical part. You wanna make sure to always install your IO shield before you install the motherboard, as you cannot do this after the fact. This also helps to actually protect your system from ESD, uh, which can actually cause a number of different problems, both ESD and EMI. So uh, you wanna make sure that, of course, you've got this lined up correctly, so you see there's an outward protrusion on the IO shield. That's gonna protrude outside of this section, so we're just gonna go all the way down to the bottom. I've gone ahead and removed the actual pre-mounted fan as we're gonna be replacing that anyways. And it makes it a little bit easier because your hand won't be pressing up against the fan. And you wanna pretty much 
push it into place on each one of the corresponding four corners until you see that the entirety of the eye shield has protruded outwards. All right, guys, so we've gone ahead and unboxed a couple of our NZXT Air fans. So the things that make these really special, of course, they're RGB. They've got a really nice look to them because they feature, of course, an internal diffusion panel, uh, which gives it a really nice kind of soft, spherical look to it. Now, here we've got the Hue Plus, which is required. Now, the Strix uh, Dash I does feature Asus Aura Sync, and we're going to be using that to be able to synchronize, of course, with the graphics card, as well as an LED strip uh, that we're going to throw into our system. But to be able to go ahead and synchronize with the Kraken X62s, RGB cooling, as well as with these AR fans, we do need to use NZXT's Hue Plus solution. So this is the box. You'll see that there's actually two connections for two different groupings that you have available. So you could go ahead and connect corresponding LED strips or NZXT fans or cooling solutions. So uh, we will need to go ahead and get this situated inside of our system. But for right now, we're not gonna worry about this. But what you do need to keep in mind is that one of these connections, the output signal, does need to run into each one of the corresponding fans that you wanna be able to synchronize and control in terms of its RGB lighting. Now, if we took it, the air fan right here, this is the 140 millimeter, one of the two that we're gonna install on the top of the chassis. You can see that it has an out and then an in. So what we're gonna need to do is, of course, we wanna orientate uh, this the way that it's going to be installed. So we want this to exhaust out, so pull heat from inside of our system outside from the top of the chassis. So it's gonna go this way. So this is what you're gonna be looking at, an in and an out. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure to set up your cables. So here you can see they're all labeled from NZXT. So we've got out. Out is gonna get connected to the Hue Plus. It's then gonna go into the in. And then we're gonna need another cable to go from the out here into the in and you're gonna to wanna to correspondingly link your fans together. So if we go ahead and now move over to the top of our chassis, we're gonna have 120, a 140 millimeter here, another 140 millimeter here, and then 120 millimeter here in the back. Now one last note that you wanna keep in mind is you wanna make sure and have the orientation set correctly. So these cable connections, one, you're gonna to wanna to do them before you actually physically install the fan so that you don't run into any kind of cramped issues at trying to plug in very small little headers. So I'm gonna first connect those, but then from there, I'm gonna make sure to have the orientation for these facing to the back of the chassis. So I'm gonna just show you guys as an example. We're gonna go ahead and slide this into place and you would see that that would go towards the back and then can allow us to maximize cable routing opportunity. So now that we've got our top 240 millimeter fans installed as well as our rear exhaust 120 millimeter fan and we've got the corresponding uh, cables route through the actual back routing points that are available here in the chassis we're pretty much ready to install our motherboard but you've got a couple of cables that it might be easier once again to connect these before you get into the, the chassis so first and foremost this one is actually going to be an accessory that you need to pick up so this is actually an internal usb3 header into a usb2 header now the Z270-i Gaming is a very cutting edge motherboard. In fact, there's no USB 2 headers on this board. It's all about future connectivity. So you've got a front USB 3 header, and then you have a next generation front USB 3.1 header. But because of that, it means that we don't have the space here to be able to use USB 2.0, which for most chassis, it's not a problem. And actually for most users, it would generally be an issue. But in our situation, we do need USB 2 connectivity for the NZXT Kraken X62, as well as our Q+. So what are we gonna do? Well, we're gonna take this adapter, we're gonna plug this into this USB 3 header, and this is gonna give us a USB 2 connection. Now, with that USB 2 connection, we've got this guy right here. This is essentially NZXT's internal USB hub. What we're gonna do is we're now going to connect this to this USB hub, and this is gonna give us additional USB 2 connections for our Kraken X62 cooler, as well as for our Hue Plus controller. This will allow us to go ahead and get all the USB connections sent to the motherboard to be able to complete all the synchronization uh, that we're gonna need. Now, in addition to that, you've also got this guy right here. This is included inside the box. It's essentially our quick connector, which allows you to have an easier level of connectivity for the front chassis leads. So take, for instance, if we go back over to our chassis here, we've got things like our power button. Well, you need to connect a cable to the motherboard to be able to have the power button work correctly. We're gonna connect this to the header here on our motherboard, and then we'll connect the corresponding leads. And it'll be much easier to run the chassis leads to these connectors here. Last but not least would be another optional cable, and that's going to be this cable, which is our ASUS Aura extension cable. So this is gonna be great, especially if you're gonna be connecting uh, compatible LED strips directly to the motherboard for control. So in this situation, See right here, we've got your female connection and your male connection. 
So what we want to look for is the ASUS or RGB header, which is always on our boards a white header. So you're going to want to line up the arrow. The arrow would designate 12 volt connection and then look for 12 volt on that header. So at this point, now that we have all these additional cables attached, we can go ahead and install this into the chassis. So next up, we're gonna go ahead and install the Kraken X62. This is an awesome high performance closed loop water cooling solution, 280 millimeter with uh, support for 140 millimeter fans. Now it already comes with fans. Those are 100% A-OK, -okay, no problems there, but we're trying to do a little bit more in terms of adding some RGB flare. So we've got the air fans that we're gonna be replacing. Now, just like we talked about the top fans, making sure that you orient the actual outward connections correctly, you need to make sure that your fans that we're gonna mount here are gonna go in this direction. So you want them to go that way, pointing towards the back of the chassis. Now, when you're also gonna mount the actual cooling solution, I'm just gonna turn this for you. You need to make sure and follow this type of bend pattern. This is critical because you wanna make sure that this flows in this way and it will allow you to position the Kraken X62 cooler in this orientation. If not, the NZXT logo won't sit actually horizontal and it won't read correctly. So next, I'm gonna go ahead and just mount these fans to the radiator and then we'll uh, keep going. So now that we've got the actual radiator mounted, we want to go ahead and connect the actual cold plate and pump. So before you do that, same thing like always, we want to be considerate that because we're dealing with a small form factor scenario, is there going to be a benefit to connecting some cables beforehand? So the Kraken X62 right here, you can see it's actually got two connections that are required. One is going to be this one, the USB connector right there, and then another one which is going to be the interface connection. So you need to make sure both of those are connected beforehand to make it just a little bit easier. And from there, drop it down in place, get it lined up, and you might need to push those dims out a little bit, but once it's settled in, we're then going to go ahead and put on the thumb screws, like so. And once you do that, you just want to do that for each of the corresponding sides. So we're moving through a build here and one kind of quick step that I generally would recommend to most builders, especially in a system like this where you've got a lot of uh, you know, components and different types of cables and connections going on and because it's a more cramped environment, you don't necessarily have a lot of flexibility to go after the fact and try to make sure that you got every single wire in the right place in terms of running to the right connection headers to be able to ensure that everything is working the way it's supposed to. So what I've got right now set up is essentially a quick test post. So I've got my power supply connected all the primary power leads that I need to have connected, as well as the corresponding cable points uh, for fan connections, uh, the NZXT Hue connections, all those are pretty much in place. So right now when we test fire the system, we should essentially be able to confirm that at least all the fans turn on, the pump turns on, and so that we can ensure that we've got basic functionality uh, before we start to get all the components um, stuffed inside our, our internal portion of the chassis. So let's go ahead and uh, check, see if we've got the power on. Looks like PSU kicked on, back fan kicked on, two top fans kicked on. I'm gonna reach go over there. And we can see that we've got the cooler. The dims also have turned on. So all the way around, we also can see that we've got the two front fans. So we pretty much have confirmation that every single light is working as it should. Uh, the motherboard has gone ahead and received power as it should. So for all intents and purposes, I now know that all my uh, core cabling is A-OK, -okay, and I just need to go ahead and uh, get it all stuffed inside. So an interesting tip for you guys, if you run into kind of doing a build like this and you're gonna be using Molex leads like what we have right here, sometimes you can run into an issue where essentially the internal leads, um, they will actually pop out from the other side. This can be a problem though, because when you of course go to uh, insert that with the actual Molex power lead, you'll end up pushing out the actual internal lead. And so uh, there's a couple of different ways you can help to kind of ensure that you have a, a secure uh, lead in terms of the internal housing. One way is I really like blue tack or, or something along those lines because you can stuff it in there. It's kind of like putty, it's malleable, it kind of helps to really um, make sure that it's secure. Uh, another option that I like is also using a hot glue gun. You can beat it, it keeps it really rigid in place, but with hot glue, it's pretty easy that afterwards, if you just kind of want to remove it, you can do it fairly simply. Kind of a last resort that's a little bit more problematic, um, and you have to also be careful a little bit with the different type of glue you use because it can sometimes melt uh, the plastic. 
uh, but is using something like a super glue and you can essentially fill a little bit of the internal cavity, let it sit and essentially uh, adhere the actual internal lead to the housing. So uh, just a quick tip for you guys when you go about uh, doing some of your cable routing. Okay, so we've pretty much uh, gotten everything finalized here. We finished up some last stage cable routing. Definitely that could even be improved on a little bit more in terms of buttoning things up, but in terms of actually getting our system up and running, we're pretty much all finished up. So at this point, we're gonna go ahead and hit the power button, see if our system powers on, which keep in mind, we've already done that pre-test post before to make sure that everything initialized. So now we're just following up again. And we can see we've got everything lit up and good to go. Now, some of the things that uh, we didn't cover directly in terms of detailing out for you guys, we did go ahead and add two RGB cable mods, uh, RGB LED strips. Those are Aura Sync certified, so those are connected via the Aura header that's on the Strix Z270 uh, gaming motherboard. And we've layered one here in the front and then another one here at the top. So that's gonna give us some nice fill lighting here in the front, splashing outwards. And then the top lighting is nice because it draws downward and gives us a nice little ambient feel. And of course, all the way around, once we synchronize all the lighting uh, between the graphics cards, so our Strix GTX 1080, the motherboard, and then from there, the NZXT Hue lighting for both the Kraken and for the AR Series fans, we're gonna get a really nice look. But before we jump into that, we need to finalize pretty much our build now that we know that everything is A-OK -okay in terms of it powering on, we've got no obstructions and we're good to go. So let's pop on this side panel. And like always, I recommend don't ever put this on before you know pretty much everything is okay with your build. And last things, uh, course, for this build is going to be to take this guy off.